course, we're in Java now. We've just gone into Solo last night off of a 12 hour train ride from Banuangi. Before that, we were in Denpasar and we've just finished the Gili Islands. So we've done a bit of traveling in the last four or five days and we're a little bit pooped. Slept in a lot today, but we pretty much come here because the people, the culture, the food are all supposed to be amazing. Yes, there are some temples in the area and batik and, you know, nice shopping malls and stuff like that, but we're really here to see the people and what the city has to offer. So we're really excited because it is the least westernized city in all of Java, or it's supposed to be. Um, we've been here for probably, I don't know, 15, 20 hours so far, and we haven't seen another white person, so we're pretty excited about that. So we slept in a little bit today, so it's pretty much lunchtime, and we're gonna go check out a place called Timlo Sastro. If I don't hear a local say it, I don't know how to pronounce it. Let's just get that straight now. But that's why I always write it down there. And this place is known for its chicken soup with offal and you get rice with it, possibly. I'm not too sure, but I know the location's been there for a really, really long time, and it's a favorite for a lot of locals. And yeah, I'm hoping it's gonna be a favorite of ours. I saw the locals getting steamed rice, so we ordered some of that on the side, and that just came with fried shallots. And on so we're gonna head into Pasar Kluwer, and essentially it burned down in 2015, and they've been able to rebuild it. And it's just a big building dedicated to batik and shirts and sarongs and gowns and dresses and everything like that and i don't think we're gonna buy anything because we don't really know a lot about how or what to look for but we're gonna go have a look and just check out the building itself and see what kind of stalls and vendors are there So upstairs is actually a massive food court. We weren't really expecting that, but normally we would eat, but since we've just had lunch, I think we're gonna pass on this today. But there are dozens and dozens of stalls here. So the mid-level here is pretty much all batik, but I don't think we're gonna pick anything up because we don't know enough about it. We don't know prices. We haven't met anyone who's spoken a lick of English. And we're just not educated enough on how to pick out a real piece where we're not going to get ripped off. So I think we need to educate ourselves a little bit before we make a purchase. We've come to the antique market in Solo in search of an old postcard. Kristen's got a lovely collection from everywhere we've traveled together and hopefully we'll be able to find one here. It's actually really funny, we're going through some old postcards here at the market and we ended up finding one from Toronto in 1991. So we're leaving the market now. Unfortunately, without a postcard, we weren't able to find one that was worthy of the collection. But the market itself is really interesting. The amount of stuff there is endless. There's a lot of puppets, masks, you know, and then you have like radios, random stuff, old batik if you're looking for that, if you know what you're looking for is really, really good there. No postcard. None of them are worthy enough. So the weather's a little bit dodgy today, so we've decided we're gonna spend it inside and we're gonna go do a petite class and just kind of see some of the processes and steps that it involves. We don't really have a full understanding. We know it uses wax and ink, but yeah, we're gonna go have a look and hopefully it'll be good. I feel like we're back at arts and crafts camp or something like that. <laughs>
on to the next step. <laughs> so we have a couple of practice runs here on the cloth before we destroy the ones that we're actually going to be making. Hi, I am Marcus from Indonesia, and this is uh, my friend. <laughs> Hello. 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 So Marcus is showing us the ways of improv to fix the crap job we've done. <laughs> I don't know if any kind of improv can save my piece. <laughs> And this is a processing, a coloring. And wow. So we've just finished the petite class. It was actually really, really good. The guy, Marcus, that was kind of like our guide or instructor was really, really nice. His English wasn't the best, but once he was comfortable enough, he just really opened up. You know, he made the whole experience worthwhile. I would definitely suggest going if you're in solo just to spend some time and just do it and have fun. And it was absolutely great experience. You have a good time in your petite class? It was awesome. So basically you can do a two hour class or you can even do a two week class, which I don't think we can handle. But no, it was really awesome. We learned tons from them. So we've been in solo for four whole days now, and we just saw our first white person besides us. First white person. It's crazy how little tourists are here. So good though. So one of the culinary attractions in solo we have to stop for on our way home is tank bay. It's essentially a rich broth made from mutton bones and ribs cooked together with a bunch of spices, herbs, and coconut milk. It's supposed to be really good. It's supposed to be pretty pungent, but we're really excited to try this one. So mine mainly consists of like a couple ribs, a jawbone that had a cheek, luckily enough. And I was also lucky enough to get a, a marrow bone that was just really, really good. Kristen's composes of a little bit more indiscriminate meat cuts. Kristen's not having a good time. So I got a taste, yes, skewer of tripe and intestines. Some people are probably gagging in their mouth right now, but I don't know, not me. Mm. So tender, it's braised. Oh, you can gum this. Kristen's a little grossed out, so she's not gonna finish hers, but I will do the honors and help her and Looking into her bowl now, I see that she has just gotten a ton of braised tendons and that cannot make me happier. If you're not looking to venture outside your comfort zone and you prefer, you know, your chicken breast and spaghetti bolognese, I would definitely not suggest coming here. You're served the entire animal, which I think is great, you know, waste not, want not. But it might be a little weird for some people. This may have been a bit of a weird video, mainly because we haven't done many, you know, destination spots or really touristy things because there really were not many touristy things to do. We're leaving having fallen in love with the city a little bit, mainly due to the people we've met. You know, walking down some of the side streets was incredible. The interactions with the locals that we've had have really made the city for us. So I definitely suggest, you know, skip the Uber, skip the taxi when you can. and find the small alleys where people actually live and just, you know, go for a walk and get lost and really don't plan for much. It's not so much the destination, but the journey because the majority of places we chose to go either were a complete bust or, you know, the rain just washed them out. But it was the people and the interactions we had along the way that really made this city for us. And it's not made for the tourists. It's made for the people that live here. And it's just really refreshing to be in that. <laughs>